Thanks for joining uh, us so early. Today I want to talk a bit about Cartesi rollups uh, and basically bringing Linux to Ethereum. Uh, I do business development at Cartesi. My name is Max. Uh, and in short, basically what Cartesi rollups is trying to achieve is trying to elevate smart contracts to decentralized Linux runtimes. And basically there's two facets to this. Uh, on one hand, we want to give your dApp the computational capacity of a full CPU or virtual machine and give you the programmability of a traditional web server, and all of that on Ethereum. So there's two constraints that we uh, want to tackle at Cartesi. The first is computational scalability, and the second one is content scalability. And I'll start with uh, computational scalability, as it will naturally lead us into this uh, second constraint. You know, imagine if the price of a banana at your local food stand just 10x in price, because the casino down the street just got really popular. Well, that's what happens kind of on Ethereum, right? When DGENs all ape into the same NFT collection or yield farm, gas prices increase for everyone else. And so in times of high demand for block space, certain apps are completely outpriced and actually can't survive on Ethereum anymore. Furthermore, certain apps are non-viable to begin with on Ethereum, even in times of low demand for block space. So on Ethereum, everyone validates everything. So you're sort of competing with other applications for block space. And having applications share the same VM removes predictability for developers, you know, in terms of user experience. Like, will I be able to serve my users in a week? Will I be able to serve them in a year? You know, as more and more apps uh, join this uh, the, uh, Ethereum, basically, you, you, the network becomes gentrified. And, um, you know, in, instead of optimizing for certain features of your application that are key, you actually need to you know, architect your application in a certain way that minimizes these costly interactions with the blockchain. So it's clear that this really uh, limits the design space. Now Ethereum is this world computer, you know, to quote this uh, early consensus blog, you know, it's not meant to be the fastest possible computer, but it's a universal computer which is accessible from anywhere by anybody and which always gives the same result to everybody. Uh, it's an amazing technology. The question is, how do we get more applications to be able to use this at the same time and also get more use cases that can leverage this as well? So how do we go about scaling this world computer? Probably a lot of you guys are familiar with this. Uh, there's two facets to it, right? Data scalability and computational scalability. Uh, Ethereum is focusing on data scalability with EIP4844 uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, you know, dang sharding and stuff like that. And... Um, basically greatly reducing the cost of adding data to its blockchain. And computational scalability has been delegated to roll-up projects, hence the name uh, roll-up-centric roadmap. Now, you know, unlocking both of these things, you know, uh, in tandem, so computational scalability and uh, data availability capacity, unlocks a lot of new use cases on Ethereum. And we can move from, you know, monolithic Ethereum, where we had the first use case as, you know, the ICO, to way more complex applications such as, you know, complex DAOs, all the way to potentially like complex metaverses, on-chain games, you know, uh, machine economy, IOTT stuff. Uh, you know, note that here, uh, if you scale data enough, you need to actually scale computational capacity sufficiently to make use of that data. And this kind of gray area uh, represents that. Uh, so you need to actually move both in tandem. Now, with rollups, we shift computation to uh, layer two protocol and use Ethereum to verify proofs that what was executed off chain is actually following the rules. And with optimistic rollups, which is what we're doing at, at Cartesi, and I'll get a bit more into that in a second, um, you know, Ethereum basically becomes this arbitration layer. You know, to give a, a really basic example, imagine you're playing a game of on chain cards uh, and you have these two guys, uh, the noun guy and this other uh, sunglasses guy, and they're playing a game and you know, they both agree on the result, perfect, we can just run the computation within the rollup and move things forward. However, if there is a disagreement, meaning that there's one dishonest party, uh, we will actually fall back to Ethereum and rerun the specific part of the computation where there was a disagreement on Ethereum. So rollups are awesome because, you know, even if we just have one honest validator, we only need one honest validator, basically, to enforce uh, correct results, independently of cooperation of, you know, the majority. Now, one big thing, though, that you, know, you need to remember is that actually dApps using rollups under global consensus will eventually face similar issues as the ones we saw on Ethereum earlier on. Uh, you, know, you, can, you can picture uh, you know, EVM rollups as like computational shards, basically. 
So they definitely grow like the capacity of Ethereum, but at the end of the day, if there's increasing demand for block space within one of these shards, you know, you face the same issues as we had on Ethereum. You know, you have, again, only a fraction of applications which are viable on each shard as more and more applications are, are deployed on the same rollup. And there's this zero-sum fight for, um, for the VM's capacity, which leads to gentrification again. So it's only a matter of time until some of these, uh, uh, you know, ro roll-ups become congested as well. And, uh, and, you know, become certain use cases then just become uh, blocked and, you know, impossible to do on them as well. Now, fortunately, there's another way to understand rollups. Um, imagine that instead of everyone validating everything, validators only validate the applications that matter to them. And we call this design application-specific rollups, or as others like to call them roll apps. Um, and you know, by letting go of shared VMs, basically, your application can have the have their own CPU and can fully leverage the power of the hardware, and with it, the exceedingly high computational capacity that comes with that. So you can also avoid the problem of net network gentrification and the lack of predictability that we discussed earlier. Now, obviously, this comes with certain trade-offs, right? Like, your app gives up a certain level of composability uh, at the roll-up level. But you know, for a lot of applications, base layer composability is more than enough. Uh, furthermore, you know, the benefits of higher computational capacity far outweigh the slight reduction in composability for many use cases. So what is Cartesi rollups? Well, it's infrastructure for application-specific rollups. You know, you can run a Cartesi rollup on top of Ethereum, on top of a layer two like Optimism, or as a sovereign rollup as well. And going back to this idea of a world computer, basically, I feel like Bankless or some other team already use this analogy, but rollups enable and data availability scaling enable us to turn this world computer into this universe computer, if you will, with rollups kind of gravitating around Ethereum. Uh, the sun, and, and you know, turning this computer into this super powerful computer. Now, to take things one step further, you know, we posit that application-specific consensus actually also opens up the design space for execution environments, and this allows us to not only create this universe computer, but also have planets that, you know, orbiting Ethereum that have very different purposes and designs that are optimized for certain things, and so we can create a lot more diversity in execution environments on Ethereum. And that's really cool. So you might be wondering what we at Cartesi want to optimize for. And uh, well, basically, we want to optimize for content scalability, which is what we discussed earlier. Uh, and um, you know, basically, we want to bring more programmability, more expressivity to Ethereum, bring more content to Ethereum. Now, let me explain why content or scaling content is so important. And I'll start with a uh, ho uh, quote from Hayek in The Use of Knowledge in Society. You know, we make constant use of formulas, symbols, and rules whose meaning we, meanings we do not understand and through the use of which we avail ourselves of the assistance of knowledge which individually we do not possess. You know, what Hayek is referring to are these man-made complex systems that are compositionally built on top of other subsystems. You know, this allows us to build new content without having to think or having to understand these lower systems and basically leverage that to create way more content, to scale content. You know, if you think about the amount of, you know, technology that, is, that exists in cars today, you know, you can see this on this beautiful visual here. You know, there's decades of accumulated knowledge that were needed to build, uh, you know, subsystems within a car, like an engine, tools that we leverage to build this engine that, you know, you do not need to understand uh, in order to, to actually build the engine. Uh, and each of these, you know, levels basically hide information about the underlying systems and enable the next layer to perform more actions more operations without having to think about them. And you know, in software, we have this, this software development stack, right? Uh, composed of libraries, languages, operating systems, compilers, interpreters, you know, instruction set architectures, which each, each abstract away the underlying systems and allow us to do more without having to think. Now, modern software is complex, so it's really important that we can, you know, it's really useful, actually, that we can rely on these battle-tested on this battle-tested content, which has been iterated on over and over. And um, basically to be able to build new content without having to write or understand their inner workings ourselves. Now, the EVM cannot tap into these abstractions, unfortunately. You know, it needs to run its own flavor of code. But now with um, you know, application-specific consensus and the computational capacity that comes with it, and this unlock in the design space for execution environments, 
you know, we can actually uh, make this happen for the first time. And that's really exciting. So, you know, the main idea of scaling content is to basically drag into Ethereum the same computer we use on a daily basis. You know, inscribed with decades of rich, battle-tested, and mature content. Uh, and with it, we can run the entire modern software development stack on Ethereum. So you might be wondering how, how Cartesi Rollups uh, does this. Well, it's, um, it uses a virtual, uh, custom virtual machine you know, based on RISC-V. It's basically a deterministic RISC-V emulator. And uh, RISC-V is like ARM, you know, the CPU you have in your phones, tablets, and laptops. And um, now RISC-V is an open standard instruction set architecture. So it's open source, has a community and, and such. And using RISC-V allows us to actually boot a full operating system on top of that. Now, we chose Linux, but you could use also other operating systems like Cell 4 and stuff like that in the future, which is a very secure operating system. Now, um, you know, this means that you can use Linux, but also all the languages it supports along with their combined ecosystems, complex libraries, and so on. We can even use, you know, databases to, uh, for smart contract development, which is really cool. So the idea is that, you know, um, you know, have a, uh, you know, a new, new planet in this universe that's really expressive, that's very programmable and, and way more similar to a tra traditional web server. And, you know, we hope this will bring, you know, new use cases for this world computer, uh, basically by bridging the accumulated knowledge and wisdom of all these years of open source software development to Ethereum. To kind of sum up, you know, uh, Cartesi rollups is this combination of application-specific rollups and uh, an expressive execution environment for Ethereum. Uh, and this means that you can use the tooling languages, libraries you love, basically the content uh, that you love to build smart contracts and dApps. Uh, we're currently on testnet and, you know, have a lot of, you know, uh, great developers experimenting with our tech. If this sounds interesting to you, you can check out our Discord on this QR code. Or, you know, come, come by our booth uh, today or during the main event as well and have a chat. Uh, enjoy the rest of East Denver and uh, thanks for your time.